Biden and Kamala Harris touring hurricane-ravaged states. The Prez was in the Carolinas in Harris, Georgia. It comes two days after President Trump visited the damage in the Peach State. Joe Biden bringing up climate change while addressing hurricane victims. Let me close with this. Nobody can deny the impact of climate crisis anymore. At least I hope they don't. They must be brain dead if they do. Scientists report that with warming oceans powering more intense rains, storms like Colleen are getting stronger and stronger. Not going to get, not going to get less. They're going to get stronger. The brain dead calling other people brain dead. Amazing. And while Biden and Harris say that the states hit by the hurricane have everything they need, residents still don't have power or cell phone service there. There's no power. There's no water. There's no internet. There's no cell phone coverage. Um, we're just in a, it's a disaster. Just pray for everybody here. Everything's replaceable. Life is not. No water, <laughs> barely at food, everything expiring in the fridge. So. FEMA is not on the ground there at all. They are not in these cities, not in these towns, and not in these villages. And now it's the mules and musk who are coming to the rescue. Check out these mules delivering essential supplies to hard to reach mountainous areas. And Elon Musk is giving storm ravaged residents free internet with Starlink terminals. Harold, you weren't here yesterday, so you, I, I, I haven't gotten your uh, thoughts on this. Uh, it's pretty, pretty harrowing stuff out there. What do you make of the government response? Well, I think the government, um, so I, I think the government's done as, as good a job as they probably could have done. I think the impact that this storm has had, or had, and it continues to have because the people we can't find, the death toll continues to go up. Uh, and like you, my heart and prayers go out, and I, and I know that we are all trying to be as supportive as we possibly can. Those that can give are giving. Um, you, you hear the stories, you hear that, man, as we have no phone, no internet, we, we can rebuild. Uh, I saw one picture where the, the bridge collapsed in that town in North Carolina, and they can't get food. That, that was a picture we saw with the mules and the horses uh, happening. I, I don't know, Greg, the answer to all of this. I do know what the impact is. It's hard in Florida, and these, it's going to be hard in these places over the next few years for people to live, to get insurance, uh, to build. Uh, the materials to build are higher. Uh, and if you listen to, listen to even the technology, I mean, I, I appreciate Elon Musk and others doing what they're doing. But we've got to think about something that something's happening here. And I, we made, you and I may differ on this a little bit on the climate change piece, but whatever it is, I remember growing up in Memphis and storms throughout the summer, there'd always be a tornado warning twice a week, three times a week. But the storms didn't hit like this when they did hit in Mississippi and Arkansas. It just, it just seems like we're talking about this a lot more than we used to be. It's because we have 24 hour cable and people have moved to coastal areas. But if you look at the past 100 years, there's no difference. In fact, there's actually just a slight decrease in extreme weather. But this isn't on the coast though, Greg. This is like inner. This is no, I'm just talking, okay. I'm talking about ex like extreme weather in general. Got it, got it, got it. So in your face. <laughs> So, Dana, there's like these small towns I'm reading about, like Banner Elk, mm -hmm. totally devastated people getting airlifted, 50 people still missing. Mm -hmm. um, that's just a, like, one, how many towns are like this? It's Well, I think that if you, this part of the country is so beautiful, and there's a reason you want to live up in the mountains and in the haulers with the creeks and the beauty that it provides. But one of the problems is then you can't reach them unless you're by mule. And the Starlink is fabulous, but also there's no power. So you, th this started, this happened Friday, right. Saturday, no Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay, today is the this is the first day that the Biden administration authorized the military to go in and help. Yeah, the, the military is probably the only entity that can help. FEMA can do a lot, and they can do more. And that woman was asking for more. There's another town called Black Mountain, North Carolina. I interviewed a woman from there today. She's a teacher. Uh, she said 23 of their teachers are missing. Schools are closed indefinitely. This is a massively catastrophic event for our fellow citizens, and we have to do a lot more. Their biggest concern, Greg, is that we are going to forget about them. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that Fox won't forget about them. I don't think that the government necessarily will forget about them, but they are in very, very hard to reach places, and many of them are probably going to have to leave in order to spend the time to rebuild because there's not even any roads. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that President Biden has already forgotten about them. Judge, uh, it's pretty rich him calling anyone brain dead. Yeah, you know, 
Uh, I don't, I don't want to go after him any more than I already have. I mean, he's a pathetic individual. But you would think that someone with so many years in government would understand the importance of throwing on a windbreaker and showing up. This storm made landfall Thursday night. Joe Biden goes to the beach and sits there for two days, Saturday and Sunday. And Donald Trump goes there with water and pizza, and he starts to go fund me, and he partners with Elon Musk with Starlink. Here's the bottom line. Um, you, these people don't have food. And when Joe Biden said on Monday, we pre-planned this, we gave them everything they needed. They're getting everything immediately. I was on Laura's show last night, uh, Laura Ingram, and there was some woman who said, We've been waiting for four days for water. We don't have water. And as someone who didn't have food or water, I remember my parents in the flood when we lost our house. They were like, we want coffee. We just would love to have a, a cup of coffee. And it was only the Red Cross. The, the fact that they were in Florida, they thought the storm was going to hit Florida, and they weren't ready in North Carolina and Tennessee and some of the other places. What, you don't have a helicopter? You don't have the ability to airdrop food the way you do in, in other countries around the world? I mean, there's no excuse. This is an administration. The only reason they're showing up now at all is because it's, there's an election. Otherwise, it would be Palestine a year later. Last word to you. Would you care to uh, comment on the mules, since you're familiar with being an ass? <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> this is the deadliest hurricane second in the last 55 years. Only Katrina is deadlier than this. That... I had no idea how bad this was. The politicians don't know. Many people in this business don't know how bad this is. Joe Biden's administration, only one day before, went on national television and warned people mm -hmm. at a binder briefing, which no one saw. Then, today, deployed soldiers. Today. FEMA, they say, got there on Monday. No one saw Monday. Still, no one's seen FEMA. People are still missing. There's no power, there's no electric, there's no cell, there's no nothing. George Bush, after Katrina, got ripped for coming four days to the site after. Yeah. This is now day five, day six, if you count. But the also overnight. warned for a week for them to evacuate, six. and they didn't. Right. They warned, they warned, they warned. Yeah. There was really one day warning, and it wasn't enough. This is scandalous how bad this is. All right. So... Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.